Good afternoon, Comic-Con. How are we all doing? Yeah. All right, so we have an amazing array right here for us to be able to celebrate season three of Stan Against Evil. We have with us John C. McGinley, Stan himself, Janet Varney, Sheriff Evie Barrett, and we've got creator, EP, and Kenny, Dana Gould. How are you? No, I'm Kevin. Oh, Kevin, that's Kevin, right. Kenny, that's Kenny is, Kenny is, Kenny is Kenny Janet's ex-husband. Ex -husband, Kevin evil. is the grave Kevin digger. Is the re yes, exactly. In real life, based on Kevin, my brother, and Kenny, my dad. It's all of these, uh, this wonderful town is based of all of these crazy people in your life, as well as all of these wonderful performers that you have. I, just tell me, you know, in three years of being able to craft this show and have it just be so wonderfully bizarre, scary, just all, it hits all of the buttons of the things that you said to me, for a show that people that loves things, this is the show for them. It's yeah, it's just, it, the show loves the same things that you love. Exactly. And it's, yeah, and it's a show that's a fan of the stuff that people who are fans of the show are fans of. And for me, oddly, uh, it's the uh, it's the it's the shallowest I've ever had to dig. Like the town is very much like the town I grew up in. Yep. The people are a lot like the people I knew growing up. And I just took the thing that I love, which is horror movies. Yeah. And the thing that I do by default, which is be funny, and mix them together. It was not hard at all. Sometimes it takes you the longest amount of time to get to the obvious choice. <laughs> write what you know, write what you love, and this show has been so much fun, but it's not only just kind of scary and bizarre, there's so much heart with it, too. And I wanted to say to John, you know, at the end of last season, such a huge motivator for Stan has been his wife, Claire, and then we had that season finale for season two, the episode where you had that heartbreaking moment where you kind of had to let her go, and and it's a huge, it was beautiful, uh, just in terms of a moment for the characters, but also it's a real turning point for Stan because what is his motivation now as we go into season three? Well, when I, when I first, uh, I'll regress a little bit, when I first met Dana and he showed me all the eight episodes three and a half years ago now, I, I wanted to point out to him that what he'd written um, he, he missed something because I, I only read it blind and I said, you, you've created this really damaged, wounded guy and you need to, you have to give yourself permission to explore him more. Yeah. He guaranteed me he would and he's, he's been good to that. And so every once in a while, he'll sprinkle in some genuinely authentic, grounded moments between Janet and I and we kind of live for it. Janet and I and Dana can all turn a joke in our sleep. And so when Dana puts the authentic stuff in there so that Dan's, Stan's not just an equal opportunity offender, but somebody <laughs> who's grounded in, in, in being wounded yeah. and, and is trying his best to reconcile that, but doesn't have a clue how to do it. Uh, that's, that's the guy that I want to I wanna try to explore a little bit. It's been wonderful to see that too. And so where we left the season was basically hell's open up uh, and you look at the town and it's kind of empty and it looks like it's in a dire place. So just tipping up, what are we going to have our two heroes deal with as we start the season? Janet. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Uh, no, let's keep talking about the sweet sentimental moments uh, in yeah. Stan in this environment. The perfect, <laughs> quiet, right. sweet yeah. place to talk about your wife who passed away, Stan. Stan. Uh, no, we, we pick up season three. Uh, I, think, I think I speak for Dana, the creator of the show, who actually has the, you know, all the idea inceptions uh, for the series by saying that we move on from that. We have to sort of move on mm -hmm. from that and the way that he uh, gets us to sort of the next piece of the, the weird Stan mismatched pieces, never going to be a complete picture, maybe puzzle, which is how <laughs> I like it, uh, is that uh, we have to solve that issue and then it sort of cracks open an entire new problem yeah. uh, that is, in, in fact, very new and very different Ooh. and takes the show in a totally new direction and we do some insane stuff that uh, I'm incredibly excited about. And some of those insane things are episodes based around some beloved homages to things. So give me yeah. a tease and all of us a little tease about what are some things we're going to see uh, this season that uh, dig into your love of all things horror and thriller and such. Yeah, this is the season that we really, we sort of complete the first arc of the story. Uh, the first of three that I have. And the, uh, this season, we, once we deal with the, the portal to hell is open, 
and hell is backing up like dirty water into a bathtub. Plug. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's like. We deal with that. Uh, we have a Godzilla episode. Nice. We have uh, uh, David. Uh, we have an X Files homage. We have a Meet the Feebles episode. Awesome. I love which Evil was, Puppets. Uh, yeah, was, which was written by... Cole Shack, Night Stalker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have Cole Shack, the Night Stalker. We, we have all the things that yeah. I see. Gentle, see? loving, see? poking yeah. fun at the Vampire Diaries. Yeah, we, <laughs> got, we have the, yeah, we have a vampire telenovela that comes to life. Uh, we have a Japanese uh, haunted hospital uh, oh movie. God. Yeah, we, we, the show became a beautiful vehicle to parody all of these things that I love. Uh, while still maintaining the mythology, and fortunately the cast is so versatile that we can do different kinds of genres and, and, and tap, all the, tap all the bases. All right, so we're going to do a little version of our game that we call Either Or, but we're doing the Stand Against Evil version of it. So you're going you're gonna to notice a little bit of a theme, and it's just choosing Either Or. All right, ready? Monster Attack or Alien Invasion? Monster Attack. Agreed. It's old hat for you. Same. I'm going to go with Alien Invasion just to be separate. Contrarian, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Vampire or werewolf? Werewolf. Vampire. Well, werewolves have urges they can't control, and the next day they're overwhelmed with shame. Ah, there you go. I have... <laughs> oh, jeez. No. So, vampire. I'm going to say wear pony, uh, if you know the show, wear pony, but I do know the uh, I'm show. not giving you wear that choice. Pony. The choice. Evil puppets or Godzilla? So, this season, oh, make a choice. Which one? I, I choose evil puppets. Godzilla. <laughs> the Godzilla episode has the Mothra twins in it, so I'm going to go with Godzilla. <laughs> I love that. I'm always evil puppets. All right, comedy or tragedy? You've all done comedy or tragedy. I know you, you uh, have true, all done both. True comedy. True comedy. I like comedy. <laughs> Please make that a new genre. I've yet to see the difference. <laughs> Which makes you a great comedian. Uh, all right. I'm going to ask Janet, and this is kind of more of a character either or, reunite with Kenny or eternity in hell. Eternity in hell. <laughs> eternity in hell. But what I do want to see... She chose wisely. Yeah. I want to see... Uh, I want to flash back to how in the hell Evie right? and Kenny ever got together. How did she together. make that choice? That feels we all like, want to know that. We all want to know that. I, yeah. I totally see it. Is that a season four episode? That's got to yeah, be some kind of a season four totally episode. It. What, a well, flash, a flashback to them us. in college or high school or something? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. they were both, they were both cops guess. together. And, I think she you know, was Kenny possessed. Was never a cop. I think, you, I think in this well, town genius. she was possessed. Backed out on your own idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dana, Plan 9 from Outer Space or Planet of the Apes? Oh. oh. Sophie's choice. I know, dude. I totally Dang. made it hard for him. Well, I'm going to say. Uh, Lately, the latter has put more money in my pocket, so I'll say Planet of the Apes. <laughs> so uh, you guys are uh, outside of the show, always doing amazing things. Just give me a little update on what each of you doing. Also, because on uh, just as a reminder, October thirty first, Halloween, y'all. This show is back for season three. But what else are you working on? Um, it's October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month, and it's also the fiftieth anniversary of the Special Olympics. And so we're encouraging people to include and elevate Yay. everyone with special needs, and as much as possible, eliminate the R word, which is retard, retarded from your language. Yes, thank you for that, Janet. What else are you up to? I wish that we would have ended with John because the work he is doing is uh, far more important than what I'm about to say. Yeah. But if you need a laugh in these very strange times in which we continue to live. IFC.com uh, has my new show. It's called Fortune Rookie. Yay. I play a version of myself who decides to quit showbiz to become a fortune teller. I tell uh, the, for the very badly fortunes of uh, people like uh, Fred Armisen, James oh, Roday, God. Tim Omenson from Psych, <laughs> um, a certain Scott Adsit from 30 Rock and Big Hero 6, Lorraine Newman from SNL, Deborah Baker Jr. from this show, and, wow. uh, and many more. That's so amazing. check it out. It's on yeah. IFC.com right now. And Dana? Scott Adsit, who was on Stand Against Evil this That's season That's correct. As well. Oh, very nice. As well as Miller visit. Uh, yes, John talked about Down Syndrome Awareness Month in the Special Olympics. Yes, Janet talked about her series on IFC. But I'd like to talk about something serious and important. I've written a comic book. Yes. Uh, no, I have a graphic novel yeah. that just came out called Planet of the Apes Visionaries. It's my adaption of Rod Serling's first draft of Planet of the Apes, and it's out now on uh, by Boom Comics. And if any of you guys are back in LA or heading October back home, October 11th, Plan, Plan 9, 9 from, from Outer, Outer Space, Space Live. Absolutely. I, last year, 
kicked ass. It was amazing. God help us in the, Thanks, God help us in the future. Oh, well, thank you guys. Very excited. Stand Against Evil coming back end of this thank month. Thank you all. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm Jackie Jennings with Sci-Fi Wire. If you can't get enough of New York Comic Con, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for news, interviews, cosplay, and so much more. What are you waiting for?